Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Blessed Monday morning to you. To God we give all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Welcome to the prayer room. Have a, have a few minutes with you this morning. Come on in. Giving God the first calves of our lips and our hearts, our body, mind, and soul. It's never too much to rise and praise the Lord. Come on in, if that is a love. Good morning. YouTube, Facebook, the Church's app, and our website around the world, wherever you're listening. Welcome. My name is Wazer Walker. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is love. Genuine love from above. Good morning. In the morning as it glows. Even, even 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Jamaica. Good morning, all of South Florida. All of the US of A. Good morning, Canada. Europe, Africa, Asia. Good morning. Entire Caribbean people. Good morning. Paradise. I'm going old school. I'm going old school this morning. I'm going old school. I'm going old school. Take me back to the place where I first received him. Come on into the prayer room. Minister Winston Reed, good morning to you, my brother. How are you doing? Grace and peace. Everybody and the heavens, and the heavens of mist. There's no feeling like this. If that isn't love this morning, now tell me what else is. My soul in the morning as it glows. My soul, my soul, my soul in the morning as it glows. Beautiful singing, grace thrillers taking us back to the days when good singing was the order of the day. Not just a performance, but good singing done by the Holy Ghost. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Manor. Well, you know that Mondays are my day, day off. Amen. Monday is my day off. And so, amen. But I woke up this morning feeling bright and chirpy and feeling like, um, you know, maybe it's better to go and pray a prayer with the people of God than to uh, pass the day and so on. And hey, listen, nobody can outgive God. Nobody can outgive God. And the least we do for Jesus is precious in his sight. And I'd rather be here praying and staying in the presence of the Lord with you and as you wake up than not to do anything at all. So good morning, good morning. My name is Wazer Walker, and this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. I'm going to take Psalm 19. Psalm 19, we're going to do that before we go any further. Amen. Bless the Lord. Then we come back to all the pleasantries and all of that stuff, okay? So, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm, Psalm 19. Amen. Bless the Lord. Psalm 19. We'll be reading that text this morning. Psalm 19. It's very, very important psalm there. Very very powerful one and the psalmist knows exactly what he's talking about so psalm 19 is our psalm here beginneth the heavens declare the glory of god and the firmament showeth his handiwork day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. 
The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The fear of the, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. And amen. Here ends the reading of a portion of God's holy word. It's already blessed. We honor his word by saying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall to be, world without end. Amen and amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Powerful stuff right here this morning. I don't know about you. But I, I deem it a pleasure to be doing something for the Lord. Um, we, we know what it is to go beyond the call of duty to do um, work in the secular world. Yes, we would, we would run errands. We would give extra time and sometimes extra money. We would do whatever it takes if that would help to, help to, to move a cause to better a situation, and so on. And um, this morning, the psalm is telling us, hey, the law of the Lord is, is perfect, converting the soul. And also, it is more to be desired than gold. It is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. And it's by keeping the Lord's commandments that we are, you know, we are warned and, and we receive a word, great reward. I would rather spend my time doing the Lord's will and his command than doing anything else on the face of the earth. As enjoyable as life is in so many other ways, there is nothing compare to be in the service of the Lord and to truly have a relationship with God. The, the, the first line of this psalm should really strike a note with every one of us tuning in. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and his firmament sh and the firmament showeth his handiworks. Stars do not have soul. The sun doesn't have a soul. The moon doesn't have a soul. Come on, talk to me. The clouds that drift by, they don't have souls. Are you with me? These celestial bodies, and you can look up whether it's a Milky Way or whether it's the, the smallest star in glory. These things do not have soul. Man is God's highest form of creation. Even though he created man last, well, at least the last shall be first and the first the last. But what I'm pointing at is if these celestial bodies, if these um, heavenly bodies can glorify God, amen, by night the moon glorifies him, by day the sun glorifies him, the stars come out by night with the moon and glorify God, and, and they don't have a soul. They, they will all be gone someday. There won't be any star in glory like we know in the heavenly bodies. There won't be any sun like we know. The Bible tells us there's no, no sun there, no moon, no light of these heavenly bodies there. Then if our 
our anticipation is to be in heaven. Then come on, sisters, brothers. No matter how busy we are, no matter how important we are, no matter how you know, tired or how much we have achieved and acquired in this life, there must be that inner truth and that inner realization and reality that nothing comes before, or nothing takes precedent over a daily walk with God, a constant being in His presence. And so I love the presence of God. And so I want, I want to bless the Lord because I realize that everything else the cows give him praise, the trees give him praise, the grass give him praise. Amen. My God, the, 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 the ants give him praise, the donkeys give him praise, the sheep, the goat, my God Almighty, the birds, the fish, everything else that has breath and can move, they give God praise. And so why should I not give him my praise this morning? Glory to Almighty God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let us give him praise. Everybody, ev everybody, everybody from one end of the heaven, amen, to, to the other. We are under an open heaven. And everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory. And that we are well on our way when we say more that... Um, that we we are we are we are striving for more of God's presence, more of His power, more of His Spirit's direction, more of His holiness, more of His purity, more of His sanctification and and consecration. We are well in our rights to desire those. Let us pray, gracious, loving, heavenly Father and our God. We come to you this morning in and through the exalted name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. O oh Lord God of hosts, we glorify you this morning. We exalt you. We yada you. We, we barak you. We shabak you. We extol you. We lift you up. We praise you. We adore you. We worship you. O oh God, we exalt you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a new day. Oh God, a new beginning, a new start, oh Lord, and great is your faithfulness this morning, morning by morning, new mercies we see. All we have needed, your hands have provided. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto all of us. We give you thanks for this today. We thank you for life, for health and strength. For the dead, praise not God, nor those who are in the pit, or those who are in the grave. Oh, glory to God. But here we are on the land of the living. We're living this moment because of your grace and mercy. And so with filial love, with hearts of gratitude and thanksgiving we come and we pour out our cells like drink offering to you giving you the first calves of our hearts our minds our body our soul our spirit our lips everything lord Take them now and let them be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take our moments and our days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. We ask this morning that as we come to the Holy Mount, that you will purify us, that you will cleanse us, that you will sanctify us, that you will purge us from all sin, all unrighteousness, from self-indulgence, pride, O oh God, from every carnal weaknesses and all impurities, everything that would pollute, that have polluted our, our vessel and will pollute our vessel if we we allow them and harbor them and they linger, oh God, before we got all spotted up and messed up, wash us in the blood of the Lamb, individually and collectively. Forgive us of the sins we know of and the sins we don't know of, the sins of omission, the sins of commission, and the sins of presumption. Lord God Almighty, forgive us for, for doing the things we should not have done. Uh, forgive us for not doing 
doing the things we should have done. We have failed you in word, in thought, in deed. We all have sinned and come short of your glory. There is not one righteous man, white or black, rich or poor, learned or ignorant, God Almighty in the church or outside of it, that is, has never sinned, O oh God, for we are all born in sin and shaping in iniquity and so we need thy divine cleansing and your spirit's direction every day for we can't even walk without you holding our hands and so have thine own way lord have your own way we are but the dust, we are the clay, you are the potter, and we're asking you to break us, to melt and mold us and refashion us after your likeness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we bless you, Lord. Thank you, Daddy, thank you. And as you have given us the rite of passage to see today, it is our duty, therefore, to be grateful. It is our duty to make use of the time that you have given to us. And so, Lord, many are risen already. Some are probably laying down, listening, watching the television or listening on their phone or any other device that they are listening. Many perhaps are up, Lord, cooking and cleaning, washing and ironing and preparing for work. Oh, God, bless the Lord, are preparing for school, are preparing the family to go out and Lord many 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 bless the name of Jesus are already out of the house and they are listening as they travel driving or walking Lord some are already at their workstation but whatever their situation wherever around the world the people are listening this morning Lord by morning or by evening in their time zone I pray that the Spirit of God will minister to everyone that strength God, you will give this morning with an eye opener this morning that Jesus Christ is the answer and there is nothing that we can do on our own in this life. There, we have no strength, no ability. We have no power, no force, oh God, no energy to do anything without Christ and God. For Lord, it is impossible to walk without you holding our hands. And so guide us, oh great Jehovah, guide that man or that woman going to work this morning, that teacher, that student, that doctor, that nurse, my God, that patient in the hospital, our place of nursing care and health care, oh God, and rehabilitation, God have mercy upon, Lord God, that, that couple and their children driving on the busy highway, protect them from accident and danger, protect your people over the busy highways, God, avert that accident right now, it could be up, up ahead waiting, but please, Please, Lord, change the course. Oh, God, let there be a shift right now. And what could have been become, oh, God, none, 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 amen, existence in the name of Jesus. Nullified. Oh, God, put an abrupt stop to, amen, a crime, a violent act this morning, a rape, a murder, a suicide, God Almighty. Oh, God, a revenge killing. Do it, Lord. Change the whole trajectory and the determination nation of the mind this morning and let there be peace let there be harmony let there be love let there be re amen reverence for god and, and fear for god and let there be love shared among your people in a very special way and so lord we thank you for what you are doing now and you're doing more than we're able to act or think because you are omnipresent you are everywhere you are omniscient you're all knowing you're omnipotent you're all powerful only you can call the shots oh god and when you do no one can call it back and so we bless you because you have shown to us that you are the mighty god the everlasting father and you are the Prince of Peace. And so we're asking for strength for your people to make it through another day. Some have arisen out of their beds, some got up and are moving around, but the pain of yesterday lingers today. God, I pray for health and strength and healing and deliverance from the all these maladies, these diseases, God, these conditions in the body. It's halting your people. They're 
unable to function. The fingers are not working. The toes are not working. The head feels like it's splitting. God, the shoulders are burning. My God, the side is aching. The chest is paining. So much is happening in the human body. But I curse every sickness, every disease, even undetected diseases that the doctors don't know about yet. Blood of Jesus, I plead this morning. I plead the blood of Jesus against arthritis, against cancer, against pain. Oh God, in the body, pain from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. Spirit of God, massage that body into healing and deliverance and breakthrough. Coming out of the condition once and for all. Give a reprieve, a lifelong reprieve from the attack and the assault upon the mortal frame. God, man cannot concentrate fully and straight. Oh God, cannot focus as they should when the body is in pain. So God, relieve that body, that man, that woman that's crying out this morning. Help God, help. Help Jesus, help. And many of the people who are suffering are people who will always be working for the Lord. They were hurt, oh God, because of the work they do in the church, outside of the church, in the name of ministry. So lift up your people, Lord. Deliver them from the bruises, from the battering, oh God, from, from the hurt and the pain because the enemy attacked the immortal frame. Oh God, will you deliver that family that has come down with the same ailment, whether it's flu or some other ailment in the body, one condition after another, the whole house is sick, but we curse sickness by the blood of Jesus. Your word declares that according to Isaiah 53, 5, Jesus Christ, the suffering servant of God, was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. We are calling out this morning because your, your word declares that God, according to the psalmist, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my voice. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Oh God of the miracle and establishment of goings. You've set his feet upon a rock, oh God, and you gave him the ability to talk about it and so I pray this morning you'll give your people the audacity and the tenacity to talk about the grace of God the, the power of God the, the, the might of God the glory of God Blessed Holy Ghost, I pray that now as we get up, as we are in prayer, oh, that the Spirit of God will minister to your people that we are stronger and when we are together because there's strength in unity. When I pray for the people of God, when I pray for God's creation, Lord, and they pray for me, when we pray one for the other, hell is in flight. And so this morning, God, we come together in agreement according to your holy word that no weapon formed against us shall prosper your word cannot lie and every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned oh god your word declares that one shall chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight we are in a warfare this morning god that flesh and blood cannot handle your word tells us that the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God dividing asunder every joint, every marrow, and is a discern of the thought and the intent of all. I pray this morning that you'll root up and tear down. My God, that you'll expose the enemy's trap and his plans and his ambushes. Lord, let not your children walk in any trap of the enemy this morning. Today are going forward. You're a 
God of unseen, who sees the unseen. You are present in every place. You've heard every plan, every conversation. You know the thoughts of men this morning. And so, therefore, wherever there is an assault on the kingdom of darkness and upon the people of the kingdom of God and by the kingdom of darkness upon the people of God, send forth help from the sanctuary this morning. For vain is the help of man. Courage, O oh God, give to your people. Give the will and the power, O oh God, and give the resilience. Some of your people have toppled over, have slipped and have fallen. My God, many have tripped and fallen on flat on their faces but thank you God there is mercy with the Lord you have not dealt with us according to your word after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities you are a God of a second chance oh God we bless you for you allow you turns and so no matter how far man has drifted no matter how deep and the mire we have been oh God wallowing there is life for a look at the crucified one. There is that hand extended reaching out to the oppressed. And so I pray you will cause everyone to touch you this morning so that we may know and they may know and be blessed. Remember, those are in difficult areas, living in difficult areas. No transportation. There's no job, Lord. Lord, the, the, the whole idea of pursuing education is uh, like a null and void. Oh God, countries that are ruled by dictators and evil men, communities that are, amen, run by dictators and gangsters and dons, oh God, and criminal enterprises. I pray that God, you will deliver your people you know how to get rid of the wicked so that the righteous can shine oh we pray for this country today this community this county this state and this country i pray for the caribbean i pray for jamaica i pray for haiti i pray god for all of the caribbean i pray for all caribbean states and heads of state and the peoples of the caribbean i pray for those in canada lord i pray for those in europe all of europe the this morning. I pray for all of Asia and all of Africa. I pray for all of Australia. I pray for New Zealand. I pray for all of God's people, all of your creation under the hope in heaven. Hear from heaven this morning. Guide and direct our thoughts and our actions today, we pray. Give us the boldness of heart, oh God, and the strength of character to stand up and be counted. Help us not to fall. Pray, oh God, to save Satan's entices, lures, oh God, and all of his trickeries and all of his plans. Oh God, his sneers and his traps. I plead the blood of Jesus against every stronghold of demons. We pray that the Holy Ghost will guide and protect us as we go throughout this morning. Guide teachers going to school again, daddy. Students already in school and those on their way. And some parents don't have it to send their children. There's no food in the house, no money in the house. God Almighty, things are really tough and they're not playing games. It's true, oh God. Things are really hard on some families. Will you remember them in your mercy? Provide for them. Open doors. We pray, oh God. Remember those who are bereaved of their loved ones death on board and they cannot help themselves they don't know God send help from the sanctuary to put the dead the dead out of their sight and to give oh God almighty a decent burial to a loved one guide them protect them console them strengthen them as they go through this time of bereavement remember the oppressed remember the demon possessed remember those who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. God, remember that man, oh God, who had a tumor in the head. God, tumor on the brain. Somebody suffering from a stroke this morning. God, will you rebuke the stroke? Will you rebuke the tumor out of the head, out of the body? Somebody's having a heart issue this morning. Kidney problem, dialysis. God is threatening blood. We 
curse it and ask that you will reverse it and the kidneys will function as they were made to purifying my God whatever comes into the body every toxic God almighty situation out of the body I pray you cast it now oh God let the let the, 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 the heart function as it was created to the kidneys the livers oh God the light oh God the lungs God the heart God every intestine every internal member of the body every hand every foot God every toe every finger my God, all the eyes, the two eyes, the ears, the mouth. Oh God, I pray that the human body will function. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against every malfunction. Glory caused by accident, danger, by carelessness, by Satan's attack, by demonic attack, by evil attack. God, every attack on the human body this morning. Some are losing their mind. Some have become senile. Some have become, oh God, forgetful. They, they have lost the ability to think and to retain what they have thought on. Oh God, some have a nervous breakdown. Some are going through, oh God, uh, whether it is... God, late stage of uh, old age stealing on. People are getting older and uh, are nervous and are frightened and are afraid to get old, believing that they will be abandoned or forgotten or they will not be able to live the life and practice their life as they have been. God, help them to know that one day, someday, whether, whether we get old or weak and strong or young, we will have to go because it is appointed unto us once to die then comes the judgment. I pray for those, God, who suffer with Parkinson's disease and those who suffer from Alzheimer's, oh God Almighty, those who have anxiety, amen, um, and panic attack, oh God, those who are troubled, I pray for those who have retired and God, they have become now sick of it and weary of being home and not having anything to do and have God, the heart is back at the workplace and they're struggling. Many of them are struggling and, and, and moping and whining and pining and losing their mind literally in themselves because God, what they used to do is all that they loved and loved most and more than anything else. So strengthen them as they are in this transitional mode. Oh God, help every one of them to understand glory to God that it was an indeed an honor, an honor, a faith a blessed state amen bless God and a worthy cause that they were involved in but but now Lord God if, if you've chosen to to end that stint and end that error that they must seek to adjust and, and make good use of the time left here on earth so for retirees I pray this prayer that you will give the strength and the gospel and the ability to live with the present amen in the present situation and present understanding of life and Lord God make the best of it now there are so many other issues there are requests that I cannot say on ear and that cannot be written on these portals or text in or typed in and there are people who have issues that they really need prayer but they don't want to divulge it to Bishop nor to the listeners this morning so whatever that need that secret need man I call your condition up before God woman I call your condition up before God and I put them before the great God of heaven, the problem solver, the burden bearer, the deliverer, the way maker, he who alone has the power and the ability to deliver. I place it in his hands and I ask, oh God, that you will comfort their hearts, you strengthen them, give them the, the, the tenacity and the, give them the grace, oh God, and, and the stamina of heart and mind and will to pursue their dreams, their visions, their goals, and to know that you are an equal opportunity, God. Hear us now, we pray. Thou God of Abraham, of Isaac, thou God of Jacob, thou God of Israel, thou God of the present day, today, and forever remember us in your mercy. I pray for Israel. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for every Jew on the heaven. I pray, God, against the warfare that's launched against Israel, the city of 
God, Jerusalem, God, I pray that you will restrain Iran, that Iran will understand that they are playing with fire. The same darts and the same arrows, the same missiles that they've sent across to Israel. You have the power to send it back into Tehran, oh God, and into even the, oh God, Ayatollah, your house, and to take out President, I, and to take out Ayatollah, and to take out the Shahs, and to take out everybody in Iran, if they trifle with God's people, Israel. And so we thank you, amen. Thanks for the nations that surround, amen, around that help to, amen, thwart Iran's wicked, diabolic plans. And we bless you and pray that the countries who act on behalf of Israel will benefit from your mercy because those who love Israel and love Jerusalem and pray for them and act in their favor, peace be unto them, say the word of God. Now be with us throughout the day, we pray. Guide us from all evil, protect us, provide for us, minister to every need. Hallelujah. Let your will be done, we pray. And Father, before we come down from the Mount of Prayer, I pray that you will let this discipline be what we take up and practice today. If we have never practiced it before or if we have left, on, left off practicing it, I pray that you will teach us how to be content with what you have provided for us, what you have given to us, what you have allowed us, O oh God, to achieve or to exercise ourselves in, O oh God, to benefit from or to, amen, bless the Lord, or to enjoy. May we be content, O oh God. Let us be contented, people, in the name of Jesus. Some of us are lusting after too much, O oh God, and it's not because we are without. It's because we have allowed the spirit, that, that craven demon, to lure us into, amen, this unbridled lust. And we are now victims, O oh God, of ungratefulness. Hear us, O oh God, we pray. May we be grateful for what we've got. For some folks never ever dreamt of what many of us have all over the world and don't even recognize it. We thank you now as we will embrace the God's command. We be grateful for what we've got in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. We thank you now. And I said, you forgive us, forgive us for being ungrateful, forgive us for overlooking the many blessings you placed in our lives, the husbands you gave, the wives you gave, the children you gave, the money you gave, the house you gave, the cars, the vehicles, the work, the jobs, oh God, the clients, the opportunities, my God, the favors, the open doors, the abilities, my God, the health and the strength you have given, the ability to think and to put things in place. God, we have been ungrateful for all of these things that we have overlooked. Oh God, and people everywhere under heaven would be grateful for just the health. God, even if they were hungry, they would be grateful for being healthy. Even if they never had a car, they would be grateful for just being alive. God, even if they never had, oh God, a husband or a wife or children, they would be grateful for a roof above their heads. God, we have everything that millions, yeah, billions of people around the world would desire even just one thing of the many that we have. Teach us, God, how to be grateful. Stop the murmuring. Stop the bickering. Stop the contention. Oh, God, and stop the contending with each other. Stop, oh, God Almighty, the jealousy. Stop the coveting after other people's things. Stop the evil desiring of other people's things and love what you have given to us. Cherish what you've given and be grateful for what we've got. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, we pray. And then Jesus taught his disciples when they pray, they ought to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Almighty God and amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Good morning. If you are just tuning in, we welcome you to the broadcast. Bless God. Let us be grateful for what we've got for the things we have and believe that it's not much and we cray after it, for some folks, it would mean a lot. Amen. Let us be grateful. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Let us be grateful for what we've got. Charlie Pride tells us about it. Listen here. Listen. Listen here. Blind man can't see flowers growing in a garden. Cripple man can't walk. Cripple man can't walk places where he wants to go. A man that can't talk things he will never say. And a man that can't hear words he will never know. Never know. Come on. So if you can see and if you can walk, if you can hear and if you can talk, then be grateful. Be grateful for what you've got. For for some folks these things would mean a lot. I once heard a man say all he wanted out of life was money. To be the richest man, have wealth and fame untold. He could, he could, he could hear and he could talk. And to some folks, this would mean much more than go. Come on, everybody, come on. So if you can see, if you can hear and if you can talk, then be grateful, be grateful for what you got. Or for some folks, these things. Will mean a lot. Oh, if you can see and if you can walk, if you can hear and if you can talk, then be grateful, be grateful for what you've got. Or for some folks, these things will mean a lot. Or for some folks, these things will mean a lot. My soul of the morning, they said, when it is nice, you play it twice. When it's very nice, you play it thrice. Come on, come on. Be grateful. Be grateful. Blind man can't see flowers growing in the garden. Cripple man can't walk places where he wants to go. A man that can talk things he'll never say. And a man that can hear words he'll never know. If you can see and if you can walk, if you can hear and if you can talk, then be grateful. Be grateful for what you've got Or for some folks these things will mean a lot I once heard a man say all he wanted out of life was money To be the richest man, have wealth and fame untold But he could see, he could walk he could hear and he could talk, but for some folks, this would mean much more than gold. So if you can see and if you can walk, if you can hear and if you can talk, then be grateful, be grateful for what you've got. Well, for some folks, these things would mean a love. So if you can see and if you can walk If you can hear and if you can talk Then be grateful, be grateful for what you've got Or for some folks these things 
Put me to love. Or for some folks these days, we mean the love. God Almighty, God Almighty, God, God Almighty, when it is nice, you play it twice and listen to me. I don't have a problem playing it twice. I don't have a problem playing it thrice. Good morning. Ah, good God. Blind man can see. Come on. Flowers growing in a garden. Cripple man can't walk places he Cripple wants to go. Unless you take him there, he's sitting one place. Uh, things he'll never say. And a man that can hear words he'll never know. So if you can see and if you can walk, if you can hear and if you can talk, then be grateful, be grateful for what you've got. Or for some folks is saying we need a love. I once heard a man say all he wanted out of life was money. To be the richest man, have wealth and fame untold. He could, he could walk. He could hear and he could talk for some folks. This would mean much more than home. So if you can say and if you can walk, if you can hear and if you can talk, then be grateful, be grateful for what you've got. Or for some folks, these things would mean a lot. So if you can see, if you can walk, if you can hear, if you can talk, then be grateful, be grateful for what you've got. Or for some folks, these things would mean a lot. Or for some folks, these things will be the love. Ah, my soul in the morning as it glows. For all that it's worth, it is the exact truth, the gospel truth. We need to be grateful for what we've got. Amen. For the things we murmur about, the things we pine about, the things we, amen, do not stop long enough to tell God thanks about and for are the things that to others would mean a lot. I am going to lift out five areas in script, a matter of fact, eight areas, eight areas in scriptures where the Bible commands us to be grateful, where the Bible commands us to be grateful. The first one is Psalm 95 and verse 2. Five, Psalm 95 and verse 2. Matter of fact, I'll take it from verse 1. Psalm 95, beginning at verse 1, verse, verses 1 and 2. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Bless the Lord. Are you getting me? Amen. So here we are instructed, amen, to come into the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalm. My God, it's self-explanatory. Amen. Bless the, ne the next one. The second one is in Psalm 103. Psalm 103 verses Amen. Two to five. What does it say here? It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. My God, they are loaded. We are loaded with them. Amen. Forget not all his benefits 
benefits. Amen. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, not some, but all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases, not some. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. He has not abandoned or left you to for self-destruct or otherwise. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. You cannot find a more compassionate God or Savior as Jesus Christ. And verse 5 it says, Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, good things, my God Almighty, not some poison, amen, not some toxic things, but good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Even the devil in hell grudges you for how God has really turned you out to be. Oh, I love this, amen. The next one, the third one is Psalm 107 verses 1 to 3, Psalm 107 1 to 3. It says, Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who am I talking to there? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Oh, I feel God up in here, bless the Lord, who hath redeemed thee from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. That's God's doing. Everybody listening to me this morning can testify without the fear of contradiction that God has been good to you. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. I said, I don't care how tough it is. I don't care how bad it looks. God has been good to you. You cannot complain. Of course, Satan would want you to complain and make it look, look bad on God. Amen. But you, you know better. You can't do that. God has been too good to you. So we're not grumbling this morning. We're not complaining. We are going to be grateful for what we've got, for what we have, and perhaps don't even understand or perceive it, or even are grateful for it. For some folks, it would mean a lot. Here is another, Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, written by Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. In chapter 3, verses 22 to 24, he says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. And therefore will I be grateful, therefore will I be thankful, therefore will I lift up my hands and say, Lord, you have been good to me. I cannot complain. Glory to the name of Jesus. Let's run over into the New Testament and we run into the New Testament. Philippians 4. Amen. Look at Philippians 4 with me. Follow. We are, we are highlighting. We are establishing as a fact that people must be grateful. Philippians 4, no matter what you have been through, no matter what you're going through, Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, listen to what Philippians 4, 6 and 7. As a matter of fact, 4, I'll take it from 4 to 7. Here is what the Bible says, Philippians 4, from 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always and again always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And listen, when a man or woman has, is grateful, when a person is thankful, what follows, amen, is what we see here in verse 7 of Philippians 4. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. If you are a grateful person for little or much, amen, if you are a grateful person in whatsoever state you are in, I tell you that your modus operandi, your, your everyday characteristic, will be the 
peace of God overflowing your life. Amen. Paul says, and the peace of God, when you are thankful, when you are grateful, when you recognize that God has given us what we do not deserve and God has blessed us beyond our request, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep our heart and our minds, amen, through Jesus Christ or through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4. Six, um, I read from four to seven. Now look at Colossians, amen. Look at Colossians 3. Take Colossians 3. Glory, very important text. Colossians 3, and I'm going to read from verse 16 down to 17. Colossians 3, 16 down to 17. It says, Paul writing to his, um, the Colossians, he said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks, giving thanks to God the Father by him. Glory, come on, will somebody just get up from where you are and boot the spirit of ungratefulness out of your life? Amen. Come on, get up and use the word of God right now and boot the spirit of ingratitude, ungratefulness, amen, and negligence to tell the Lord thank you out of your life. Use the word of God and boot it out of your life. You are not a victim this morning. I am not going to indulge you. You are not a victim. You are more than conquerors. Bless the name of Jesus. I've found a, a few more for you. Bless the name of Jesus. I've found a few more. Let me take another one for you. Bless God. Oh, how we ought to give thanks to the Lord. Turn to first. Um, turn to Philippians four. Let's take Philippians four. Amen. Bless God. Philippians chapter four. Verses 11 and 12. What does it say? Philippians 4, 11 and 12. Paul writing to the Philippians, he said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am. And here I can play on your theology. So whether you're in Michigan or you're in New York, whether you're in Connecticut or you're in Florida, whether you're in Georgia or you are in New Jersey, whether you are in California or you are in, bless God Almighty, hallelujah, you're in um, Chicago or you're in perhaps Washington State or, amen, Idaho, Iowa, amen, any one of the state you're in, playing on your theology, literally, or if you're in any of the Caribbean states or any one of the states in Europe, amen, or African states states, any one of the states you're in, but I'm talking about literally, literally, Paul says, I, I, I know who I am. I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not speaking in respect of want, um, because he says, uh, rejoice. Let me back up at verse 10. He said, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again. And we're in, we're also careful but he lack opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content, therewith to be grateful, therewith to give thanks. I know both how to abase and uh, I know how to abound. In ev everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry and both to abound and to suffer need. Are you with me here? So whatever state you are in, bless the Lord. In a literal state, living in any state, give thanks. Amen. Bless God. And only you believe that, amen, if you're in Texas, you can't make it. Or in Florida, you can't make it. Or if you are in, bless the name of Jesus, in Virginia, you can't make it. Or you are in Pennsylvania, you can't make it. Or you're in Detroit, you can't make it. Amen. Somewhere in Michigan. Amen. Somewhere, amen, bless God, in one of the states in the Caribbean. And you, yes, you can make it in Jamaica. You can make it, even in Haiti. You can make it. The, the Haiti is in a, is like a 
powder keg right now, but people are living decent life in Haiti. It's not everybody in Haiti is a thug. It's not everybody in Haiti. They're Christians in Haiti. They're godly people in Haiti. They're people who are living for Jesus and are praying for their country in Haiti. Give thanks. And the last one I want to share with you on that this morning is same First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 and uh, 17. Let's see if we go down there. 16 and 17, what it says. Mm, are you with me? Here is what the scripture says. Rejoice evermore. First Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5, 16. Oh, glory to God. 17. Pray, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Glory. Hallelujah. I hope those ring, rung a bell in your spirit. The Bible says that in everything, we should give thanks. This is not the words of the bishop. This is not the words of a certain denomination or a certain church. This is God's word. In everything, give thanks. Glory. Give thanks in pain. It's not easy to do, but you've got to form that whole, you have to create in yourself that ability to do it. And People can be grateful for you, uh, that God has been good to you, that God came through for you, but you have to be grateful to God for yourself. There are things that not even God is going to do for you. As I said before, okay, so you have a house and a garage, but you don't have any car. You are better than billions of people around the world. They have no house, they have no car, they have no garage. Okay, so you have a wife or you have a husband, but you have no children in as much as you want children. Well, why don't you praise the Lord? There are some people who don't have a wife, who don't have a husband, and who have dozens of children that they cannot afford, and some have no children at all, nor siblings, nor parents. They are like alone in this world. I met a man who told me that he's the only person he knows in the world as it relates to close relatives. Every relative has died. Has died. Every member of the family has died. Are you with me here? We must be grateful. So you're in pain. You're here listening to Bishop this morning. Your head hurt. Your hand hurt. Your tummy hurt. Your chest hurt. Your feet hurt. Look at them. They're swollen. My God, your eyes bulging out of your head. Your ears almost stop. Your you're lispering with your tongue. You're unable to speak, speak fluently and clearly. Hey, guess what? You're alive. You're alive. There is hope for the living. Give thanks. Amen. Give thanks. Give thanks. You work and you don't see much of what you work for, but at least you're not broke. At least you're able to take care of yourself. Give thanks. Can I talk to you a little more? Bless the name of Jesus. So you have one suit to wear to church. Amen. You better give thanks. I've been there. Bless God. I have clothes now that I have not put on since they were purchased for me or since I got them. And I don't really get much things, but since I buy my clothes. Bless the Lord. Are you hearing me? But the point I'm making is, when I used to wear one black pants to church, don't play with me now, I'm not some little fly-by-night preacher who, amen, just want to be a celebrity on ear and just looking for likes and looking for a viral video. Uh, that's not what I'm about. I'm telling you facts. I, I was there and I had to give thanks then. One black pants, I used to have one dege dege black pants, one only black pants, a pair of pants. 
and I wore it till the seat of the pants shred came apart. I wore it till it rubbed out and, and came apart. I, I've told you already, I got the needle with the white thread and I threaded the needle and started sewing my pants with the white thread and I put on my pants feeling happy it's come back together. On my way to church, the, the, the pants seat tore out with the white thread grinning their teeth. And in those days, in early 80s in Jamaica, amen, little temple deliverance church of God as a young Christian, I was active in church and I, whatever I was given to do, I could not put my one pants on, amen, bless God, as an excuse. I had to do what I had to do. Whether people looked at me and derided me or laughed at me or whatnot, I could not care. But here I am today. It's become a testimony. If I never had a test, I would not have had a testimony. Are you with me? And so I want to say to everybody who is listening, be grateful. Amen. You're not earning the same amount that you used to. Be grateful. You cannot afford the big house that you used to live in. You have to downsize. Be grateful. Your business is not booming as it used to. Amen. Be grateful. You're only getting, bless God, a minuscule, a little minute measurement of what. Just be grateful for Jesus' word. He says, he that is grateful in that which is least is grateful in, will be grateful in that which is much as well. Amen. Bless the Lord. And, and listen, let me just talk reality to some of us because I'm not going beyond 8 o'clock. I've got 28 minutes left up in here. But I hope the Holy Ghost is showing you the reality of what the Spirit is saying, how, amen, what God says about being grateful. Listen to me. There are many, many of us in the church today who were gamblers. Well, not us as in me, because I never used to gamble. I'll tell you the truth. I don't know what it is to gam gamble or go to dance or amen, to have sleep in a woman's bed, uh, all of them. There are some things that the Lord protected me and preserved me from, and I am not um, sorry. Bless the Lord. But there are many of you in church and many of you listening to me who used to be gamblers. I mean, you were addicted to gambler, gambling, habitual gamblers and smokers and drinkers. The money that you used to spend on gambling, on drink on, on, and smoke, you, you never used to cry shame or you never saw that as any big deal. You just put out money. You chew it from your bank account. You borrow it from even strangers to gamble, to drink, to smoke, and to sport. Amen. Bless the Lord. You knew back in the days how to really live. You live on a dime if that was the case, and you lived on the millions if that was the case. Whatever state you were in, you lived and you functioned. So, oh no, you're a Christian. And all of a sudden, you expect every day you get up, your car, trunk, car gas tank must full, your bank account must be overflowing with money, your house must have all the food in there, and you must have change of raiment or clothes every day. Amen. Bless the Lord. No wonder you believe you must have change a wife and change a husband every day too. No wonder you believe that you must have change of church and change of preacher and change of everything. Your, your mindset is warped. Your mindset is warped. You, you, can, you can look back at the old world that you used to live in. And many, many persons who are listening to me today, they never had breakfast many mornings and they still went to work and nobody knew they did not eat and they were not Christians and they were not unfasting. Then how is it now that you are Christian? You know how to wait. You know how to, to, to suffer hunger. You know how to abound and abase. At least you should know. And, and every time there is a little lack, you get uptight with God. 
Mm, God, I wish I could say it like I feel. I know some people don't like the truth, but it's not so right. You don't have to say amen. You can say ouch or a me or something like that. Bless the name of Jesus. Yes, there is this notion. You know where it derives from? It derives from this name it and claim it gospel that these prosperity preachers have been preaching to you. Your mother had you and your father had you. You were born in poverty and raised in obscurity. They never had the education that they had. All they had was a little farming and they planted the corn or the peas or the yam or the Irish potato or the sweet potato or anything else, the tomato, the sweet pepper, the the onion, they, they planted cucumbers, amen, they planted the gungu peas and the red peas and they made their living from it, they waited until the crop came in, they ate, ate, ate little and nothing literally and provided only what they could afforded then for the family and they brought you up amen and you've never heard your mother cursing God or wishing that they were never alive or your father that they were never alive because things are too hard, you never heard heard them, amen, grudging anyone for anything or stealing from anyone. But you have gotten up today in modern day society and you have taken on a different kind of amen, posture towards living than what your parents taught you and what you knew they endured and raised you up through. Why? Because of our modern day theologians, many of them who duped you in believing that you must be able to afford a plane ticket it when you're ready. You must be ready. You must be able to go around the world when you want. You must be able to find that dollar in your pocket when you listen to this gospel preacher. Glory to Almighty God. Sometimes God strip us of all that we have so that we would show more gratitude for what he gives. Are you hearing me? Some of us are bathed in blessings and favors. Go into your closet and you'll see what I'm talking about. Go into your, your refrigerator and that deep freeze that you have and see what I'm talking Some of you have meat in your fridge until it's frostbitten. You cannot eat it. You'll have to throw it out. Some of you, my God, you put the drink in the fridge for so long and you have bought 10 different drink after that and you have not touched that yet. Ice cream have become ice. Can I talk to you? Amen, my God. Vegetable rot in your fridge. Amen, drawers and so on. My God, the shoes that you have in your closet, the heels are dry rot and the leather is dry rot. You are ungrateful to Almighty God. You, you do do not suffer lack or need. You just have wants that you want to. You have an insatiable appetite. Oh God, for things, material things. But I, I dare you to stop and to think as the scripture said. And Paul says, it's not that I'm speaking of being in want or need. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, whatsoever situation. I am in. I am content. I am grateful. Bless the name of Jesus. And for some of you who are looking at me and you long up your mouth on God, you pout up your mouth on God, you go to church and some of you give your offering and your tithes in church, whichever church it is, whether echoes of praise or the church you attend, you give your money and you expect that God must come like a bellhop to you and he better have your return by the time church over because Anyhow, you give your tithes and offering in full and you do not see God come back to you before the weekend or before the day is done or before the midweek, then you're going to strike out on him. Or if you go to church and hear a woman or a man testify in church that they gave less than what you put in your envelope or you put in the offering plate and God did not do that for you, you're vexed with God. You are carrying God wide and you're keeping malice with him, you hypocrite. You bless the name of Jesus. Look what the Lord has done. Look at you. How much can you pay him for the breath you're breathing? 
How much can you pay him for the health that he has kept you in? Bless God. How much can you pay him for that wife or the husband, the good wife, the good husband, the obedient children? My God, look at your boy. He's prospered. God has prospered him. He has raised him up in companies. Amen. Above ranks and requirements. Look at your daughter. God has blessed her. My God Almighty favor is running her down and overtaken. Look at you. When Jesus found you, you were in your blood. Like Jer Ezekiel said, you were all wallow in your blood. You were nasty. You were naked. You were messed up. Everybody reviled you. No one wanted to keep company with you. And Jesus literally took you up and put you in his spiritual bathroom and gave you a pure wash, a clean wash. He powder you up. He fixed you up. He makes you um, over and over and over. Look at you now. People are looking at you and said, oh my God. Oh, the grace of God. You come show off upon God now. Yes, I know a lot of us don't like this kind of teaching and preaching. This kind of jar on you and make you feel guilty and make you feel, yeah, man, why you feel guilty? For some of us in the kingdom of God, we're too ungrateful. We're too ungrateful. And you know, it, it, it's, um, it's an indicator. When a man is unfaithful, ungrateful to you, when people are ungrateful, it's an in indicator of the same way they treat their, their maker, their creator. We are an, an ungrateful bunch of people. And I pray that God will help us to be, amen, to be grateful. Sister Macy Beckford says, envious and strive, uh, envy and strife are rampant in us and through us because of our ungratefulness. Are you hearing me? Bless the name of Jesus. Me not, me not, hey man, me not joking, man. A serious business. Bless God. Me says some of the problem that many of us are having is not that we are not getting anything from God. It is not true. Satan is a liar. God is blessing us. The songwriter says, every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is blessing me. Look at you. Come on, people. I'm closing now. But look at you. Take a good look at yourself. God has given you promotion that you didn't study for. Other people who have sat in that seat where you're sitting had to have gone to college, university, and other places for furthering their education. God just took it up and dropped you in your lap. The ministry that you have, you were not, you didn't do anything to get it. Bless the name of Jesus. Come on, talk to me. Some of you men who are looking, looking at me and listening to me, you are so ugly. Bless the name of Jesus. You were so ugly. Talk the truth. Some of you women who are listening to me, you were so ugly. And God gave you the most handsome husband. And he's not only handsome in facial appearance, but the man has a character that is impeccable. The man has a, a mode, he has, a, he has an attitude that is begrudged by many. Amen. Yes, you men who are looking at me, you are so ugly. You're not deserving of the wife that you have. Come on, bless God. I even know while I'm speaking, you're still ugly. Amen. But Look at the woman that God put in your love, in your lap and in your life. And trust me, you don't have to worry that she'll give you no bun. She not give you no bun. Are you one for your eyes only? You not deserve it because you are wild like wild deer and nasty and stay bud. But God bless you with a good woman. Be grateful, man. Hold on. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for life, health, and strength for our son, Joel. God, as he goes to work, cover him with your blood and help him to be grateful for what he he's got and keep him safe from accident and danger. Cover the car, cover him and the workplace and bring him back home safely at the time appointed as you give him strength to work today in Jesus name. Amen. Good morning, my son. I love you. Be grateful for what you've got, my son. God bless you. Amen. So this is a serious thing. Serious children. There is my son. There is my son. I am grateful. I am grateful at his age, at his age, his age, 
I, I never dreamt that I would be in America. Bless the Lord. I never dreamt that I would be here. Amen. Bless the Lord. Pastoring churches in America and preaching in so many states and living here. And here is my son grew up here in America. Amen. I don't have to take him. There was a day when I had to drop him at school and drop him at his work and picking up. Bless God. No, I can sit back and watch my boy drive. I was telling my wife that I've never seen a young man capable of reversing a vehicle as good as he does. He's a master at reversing vehicles and I've tried him with it. Amen. Bless the Lord. He is like I've gotten a gift. Uh, he can drive forward, but he has a gift of backing up and reversing vehicles. And so I was telling my wife, I'm so proud of him. Bless God. I'm proud of him. I'm thankful to God. As I was sharing with that lady last night, we are grateful to the Lord that our children have not put us to shame. We have nothing to hold our heads down for and any shame, anything to be ashamed about. Blessed be. And they are tempted like any other ch children who came from the islands or from anywhere in the world to America. They got the culture shock around them. They saw things and they keep seeing things just like everybody else. But they have made a calculated decision that it's all immoral and ungodly and it doesn't have, amen, any, any desired end to it for being all mixed up in the world. We must be grateful, be grateful for your pity in them, man. Come on, be grateful for your children. And every now and again, you must look at them and tell them, boy, I'm grateful for you. Girl, I'm grateful for you. Amen. How about you? When last have you told your husband, wives, I'm talking to you. Wake up out of your bed and listen now. Wives, are you hearing me? Husband, listen to. When last, every woman who has a husband I'm talking to, including my house. Amen. My wife in my house. When last have you looked at your husband and told your husband, Huzzy, husband, hubby, my honey, my darling, my, my best friend, I thank God for you. When last have you looked at your husband and told your husband, honey, I am really grateful for you. I thank God for you. Thank you for being my husband. When last have you done that? Hey, you wives, I'm talking to you. I'm asking you. When last have you told your husband that? Well, I know some of them give you a whole heap of problem and make you mad sometimes. You don't want to tell them anything so you get to the head. But it's about time you send something to the head. Yes, perhaps if you send something to the head, they will start behaving better. How is that? How is that? How about you husbands? When last have you looked at your wife? Amen. Bless the Lord. You know me already. Don't let me go down the street. When last have you looked at your wife and told her, Honey, I thank God for you. Thank you for being my wife. Thank you for being the queen of the queendom. When last, when last have you looked at your wife and told your wife, honey, I thank God I'm married to you. Well, I said, like lady, I tell her at nausea. Oh, yes, I told her. I, I thank God. Hey, because, hey, listen to me. I was a lonely man. Amen. I was living with people, but I was lonely. I saw people with their beautiful wives and their children. I never knew that God would have given me a beautiful wife, the most beautiful wife and the most wonderful children, beautiful children. I was telling my daughter yesterday that, girl, you are pretty. Bless the name of Jesus. I looked at my boy and he was a handsome prince. Amen. Bless the Lord. He's just gone out to the door. And if you notice every morning, this is no joke business. He's not leaving the house without prayer. Amen. He's over 20 odd years old. But he prays for himself, but he's not leaving the house without daddy's covering. This is serious business. I thank God for my family. And some of you need to stop. Some need to stop and start doing the little things that you gloss over, that you believe are not nearly necessary. They're not necessary. Start doing them. Yes, man, may I talk to you? Bless God. You see a man who will listen to me. Yes, of course, she doesn't look like when you pick her up. But how on earth do you expect she, she's to look like when you just pick her up? You pick her up, her titty them stand up in front of her, just like this, amen, stand up like a rain in a rider's hand. Bless the name of Jesus. Her lips, them look like cherry. You bite them up now, they look like an asphalt road. Amen. Bless the Lord. Crack up, crack up like when, bless the name of you, butter the woman. 
bless the name. Look at her. Bless God. When you took her up, she had a flat belly. My God, and she had a bum run about there. Amen. She was she was one sight to behold. That's why you couldn't pass her and you end up marrying to her. She was beautiful. She had a lovely face and all of that. But now, after all of them, eight children and nine children, ten children, or even one pitney. After you have impregnated her and you have literally altered her physical appearance, you expect to come find her back in the same shape. And some of you men listening to me, you batter your women psychologically, that is. Some of you have never beat a woman physically, but psychologically you batter her. Because she have on too much weight now, you, you let her feel bad and call her fat and, and mumpy and all of them something. I'm playing them games there with me, bless the name of Jesus. She ain't no mumpy. Amen. A baby fat. Probably baby fat still in other woman. Maybe when she had the baby, if you had stick closer to her and given her a few little exercise and gone to the gym with her, she would have re um, captured the figure. And so you left her alone and she, you out the road with other women, uh, carry on and on the job. And she knows yeah, it's not work you were all that time. You were not at work. Stop lying to the woman. You out with somebody else, drinking, carrying on and so on. If a woman ate herself, amen, to the size she she is. Every day you look at her, you're disgust. Left her alone. Amen. Leave her alone. Bless the name of Jesus. With you, you, I'm talking to you, see a man. Are you may talk to? You see the little figure you keep? You see how you keep trim? Bless the name of Jesus. Because you tell yourself, say, anyhow you're big and fat, you can't do nothing because there's a big belly man can't hide on the bed. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yeah, that's why they say big belly man can't hide on the bed. And you so bad and wicked, you can't jump through window and you can't hide on the bed till, amen, a woman take the husband out of the room and you jump through window and gone. But remember, I draw your name, you're going to get caught. Amen. You must be grateful for what you've got. Amen. Listen to me. Elect lady. Me not take up no woman put in front of you. Bless the Lord and make you feel like you a dog and like you are, you know, wanting and all of that. Woman, you are the most valuable woman God could ever give me. Every other woman is either for somebody else or God alone. Are you reading me? Are you understanding me? You have to treat your people with respect and you have to give, you have to be grateful for what you've got. God could have given somebody else your wife and hey, some of you men, you better hear me, hear me good before I close. I said, God could have given your wife to another. But it's through the Lord's mercy why you get her. And don't believe say, your physiques and your sexual prowess. And because you had what not and so on and I hit you love. Go away. Bless the Lord. If you don't know them, woman can tell you. I'm going to teach you here on ear. I have a whole lot of women. A lot of feminists are teaching that marriage is slavery. And they are inculcating it in the head, minds and heads of the women. Many women telling them, get your dildo. Amen. Get your vibrator. Tell the man, bye-bye. Amen. you away with you. Bless God. And they're keeping each other's company and they're chatting about what they're doing and how they're operating. Them no want you, so you better be careful. Those of you who have a husband or have a wife, you better be grateful. Let her feel belonged and loved and appreciated. Stop cussing her about her foot, them big. Amen. The first night when she go in a bed with you, when you were stealing love on the side, that is the same big old foot them you went into the bed with. Nothing about that, no change. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. And now you're cursing her about her mouth big. That is the same big old mouth and lips them. You kiss and suck and love the night, the first night. Come on, behave yourself and be grateful for what you've got. For some folks, it would mean a lot. I'm done. I'm done. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, you, you tell all of them. I'm, I ain't joking up with nobody up in here. Some of us are ungrateful, man. Amen. You treat the woman like say she a dog. After you're done, ride her off and give her ten, two, three, four, five bikini. Bless the Lord. As she one bore all of your nasty nature, your nasty behavior. And oh, all the devil would be having a headache if he was your wife. Bless God Almighty. Satan's sister would have gone report to her brother. And hell would have come against you for the things that you've done to your wife and the evil and, the, and, and all of the things that you have said to her. Amen. And she's still maintaining her equilibrium and stay with you. Other woman would have back your throat long time or shoot you or do all kinds of bad things to you long time. 
if if it hadn't been the mercies of God. You better be careful. You better be glad she's not a some gun tooting, amen, blah, 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 blah kind of woman. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. I'm done. Amen. I'm done. Glory to the name. <laughs> amen. Bless the name of Jesus. I, I see I see somebody online asking for prayer. I'm going to close now. I'm going to close. Somebody's asking for prayer because they're having pain in the belly. They're having pain in the bed, backside. Everywhere about them is paining this morning. Are you hearing me? Amen. For some folks, whatever we complain about would mean a lot. Some people that are glad we have a pastor like me, I preach to them, I come out in church, come preach. And you, you have me so much that, you, listen, you don't even pay me no mind. Amen. My members don't even come online, come say hallelujah, say amen, or say amen, good morning, bishop. Amen. You read me? You, you get what I'm saying? Some churches would do anything for Bishop Walker to be their pastor right now. Some some church folks, if they were anywhere in West Palm Beach, they would never go to another church but Echoes of Praise so that they could sit down on the Bishop Walker's preaching. The members at Echoes of Praise, some of them don't even come on. Later on, you will see them post other people things on Facebook and other crap that they are watching and enjoying on Facebook and wherever and then send all kind of trash around through WhatsApp. I've gotten them. Bless the name of Jesus. I'm not telling you anything that is not true. I am just telling you the raw truth. You may not like it, but that's so you go. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the blessedness of being children of God, the blessed state of being in fellowship with Jesus. We thank you for communion so good and the Christian kinonia that we share. We thank you for the, the word of God, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And, and, and for reminding us this morning that we must be grateful for what we've got. We must be thankful to God. You do not owe us anything. Nothing that you have done for us or you keep doing for us. Are you obligated to do anything of the sort? It is out of your goodness and your mercy because you're God. You're not still like us. You don't behave like like us, you're not bad mind like us, you're not grudgeful like us, you are not a vengeful being like us. We lie bad and wicked, we teeth and we covetous. My God, we're full of bad mind. We hate one another, we grudge one another, we are jealous of one another. For even what, even when we have more than others, we grudge them for the little they have. But thank God, you don't behave like us, Father. God Almighty, we're really sick. We really, sin has really sickened us. Oh God, may we repent today and be grateful for what we've got. And so we thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, feet to walk, hands to handle, mouth to speak. God, we thank you. For our families, we thank you for wives and our husbands, our children. Thank you for money. Thank you for food. Thank you for clothes. Thank you for a roof above our heads, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet. Thank you for the jobs you gave us. Thank you that some of us, oh God, listening, don't work and we're not working now, but you have not left us hungry or penniless. You have made a way when there seem to be no way. Thank you. Go oh God that you have given promotion to those who are working tirelessly. Thank you, God, that you have blessed a barren womb with a child. Oh, God, and a family. Oh, God Almighty, you have brought their loved one back from the, the jaws of death. Oh, God, and terrible sickness. We thank you, God. We thank you for what today holds. It's, it's a day that is loaded with the promises of God, the blessings of God, the presence of God, the goodness of God. We thank you. And we glorify you and we ask as we go throughout today, you help us to be grateful for what we've got. No matter how rough life is, no matter how tough it is, no matter how hard it is, and things are really not, amen, as easy as they used to be. Help us to still be grateful for your eyes are on the sparrow and you are watching over us. Honor thy word today, we pray, O God. If we learn in whatsoever state we are in to be content, if we learn in whatsoever situation we're in to be content, then God, you will show forth 
your manifold blessing and show it upon your people. We thank you now and we give you praise and we give you glory. It is in Jesus' powerful name. I pray. I pray for the sister online that is asking for prayer. She's feeling pain in her tummy, in her chest, in her back, in her feet. God Almighty, all over her. She believed that witchcraft and sorcery has come up against her. But in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we bind the spirit of witchcraft and sorcery and necromancy, obia, black magic, God Almighty, voodoo. We bind the spirit of witchcraft. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare, woman, thou art loosed from the tyranny of Satan. Hallelujah. Glory. And I blood you up this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I blood you up. And I pray, God, that when the enemy sees her, they will see the blood and flee at the rebuke of Jesus Christ in the name of the Father. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for morning manna. Thank you for the people who got up early, oh God, and eat and dine at your table. Thank you for stirring up our consciences again. Thank you for turning our hearts, oh God, from the present natural time, oh God, to the things on high. In the name of Jesus, I give you glory for what you're doing through this ministry, in this ministry, and I ask that you'll continue to lead and let us follow. Thank you again for giving us another chance to be thankful for all you've done in Jesus' powerful name. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to Almighty God and amen. Good morning, everybody. I've come to the end of this morning's manner. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And I, I just came on business for the king. I'd rather got up Amen. I'd rather got up and just worship him than to sit down there. Amen. Bless God. I give you this last song here and this other one. Grace Thrillers. And if God has been good to you, join him and just revel in his good. I got out of my bed this morning. I got up out of my bed this morning. And I looked up towards him. I did. And I found myself saying Come on, come on, boy. Grace you know Thrillers. Say Jesus, Jesus, you've been good to me. Oh, you've been good to me. Oh, yeah. I know you, Jesus, you've been good to me. Lord. Sometimes down, and I'm sometimes down. Almost never, never, never to the I'm ground.
Good morning, Bishop. How are you doing this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm not feeling too well. I've been having palpitations for ever so long. You know, been to the doctor, been to the cardiologist. I did a 24-hour monitor, hold a monitor on Friday morning into Saturday morning, but I have not received the result as yet. But I've had palpitation, my heart raised last night. And just now, it started to race again. You know, so I'm requesting pearls. I'm not sure what is happening. The echocardiogram and the ECG showed normality, right? And um, what he said, he wanted me to do the Holter monitor. He said it is not in sinister, but he wants me to do it so he can know the root okay. of the palpitation as a cardiologist. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So Morning. you are so, unable to function um, because of No, that. Bishop, I do function well. Mm -hmm. It is just the palpitation, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other effects. Okay. No other effects with it. It's just the, the you know... And sometimes when it doesn't raise, I feel flutter in my neck. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we we that's why we come here. Um, in in the morning, that we yes, pray sir. pray one for the other. You know, um, one of the things. One of the things that. Um, that I, I say to, to us as we come to this prayer line. Yeah. Is we must understand that God puts us in a place um, that we can intercede for one another, that we can touch and agree. We can go alongside each other in prayer. And yes, sir. They, whilst we are not physicians um, like doctors we know the great physician the sympathizing Jesus and yeah. earth has no problem there's not one case okay, that then. God can deal with that amen all right so let us pray right now don't 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 overexert yourself and um, just just relax if I may say amen Allow the Holy Ghost to massage your, your heart and your soul and your, your mind. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm not doing some yoga thing or all of that stuff. I'm telling you, just, just relax. Just relax. Let your, let your spirit relax. Let it rest. Glory to the name of Jesus. Uh, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Amen. Rest in the Lord. Rest on him. His words are true. Amen. Bless God. If trouble in your life, God can fix it. If trouble in your body, 
God can fix every member of the body. He, he regulates the heart. It is he who has made you. And so I encourage you just learn the art of relaxing even in the midst of war. Because the battle yes, is sir. not yours, said the scripture, the word of God. It belongs to the Lord. And so, Father, in Jesus' powerful name, we lift up my God, Sister Claudia, to you this morning. We lift up her, her prayer request. We lift up God, her needs. We lift up the issue at hand with her heart. The pulpit, the, 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 the fast beating, the, the, the rhythm of the heart right now is not the regular, it's not the normal. It is throwing her off balance and she doesn't want to operate in that zone. So God, we ask in Jesus name that you will regulate the heart. Oh, that you will bring it to the right oh glory heartbeat and the right level that God there'll be no complication developed because of what she's experiencing right now and I speak to her heart and I command every vein that is connected to the heart every tissue every muscle everything that connects and flows from the heart to the heart that God it will function as it was created and so Claudia's heart today I call you to function properly function orderly function how you were created to function and I bind every attack upon your mortal frame from outside or from within I curse every malfunction in your body and I decree wellness and wholeness and healing in the name of Jesus Christ the Son of God glory to Almighty God Lord we curse a trepidation we curse anxiety and stress we curse oh God undue and uncalled for emotions in the name of Jesus we bind frustration Hallelujah, anxiety and panic. Oh God, we curse them and call them out this morning and say to your daughter, in Jesus Christ's powerful name, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. I speak the spirit of relaxation over every member of your body. And I call your body to function properly, orderly, your heart to function normally. And in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' powerful name, we decree and declare it done. And we say it's done. Amen. And amen. And amen. Lord, we thank you. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. God bless your daughter. Amen. God keep you. May the light of his countenance shine upon you. Like I said, learn to relax. And for you and for those who are listening, there are things happening in our lives or have happened to us that we have no control over. If the car crash, it crash already. If the man left you, him left already. If the woman left you, she left already. If you lose the job or lost the job, you lost it already. If you don't have the money, you just don't have it. Bless God, whether for rent or to buy anything new or to travel or so on. Amen. Bless God. If if you had a surgery and the, the surgery was successful, do not let frustration or frustration or any other them shun cause you now to develop another condition. In the name of God, relax. God is in charge. All right, daughter? Yes, sir. God, God bless, bless you. you. Much love, daughter. No. God bless you. All right. Shalom. Okay. Off air, you wanted to talk to me off air? Yes, sir. All right. You got to gotta hold on a little, just a little, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, bless God. Here is another another person texting in this morning saying, Good morning, Bishop. I am so grateful to having you in my life. God has been using you to let me draw closer to him. So great. So I'm grateful. Please pray for me so I can amen. Bless the Lord. She needs prayer. And so bless the name of Jesus. Good morning, daughter. Amen. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning, daughter. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Bless the Lord and may God bless you. 
May God bless you. May God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Bless the Lord. Father, I pray that you will bless this dear woman and her request this morning and lift up to you. You are an on-time God. You may not come when we want you, but you'll be right in time. So show up for her and show up for her. Do great and mighty things in her life that she know not of this morning. And I decree and declare it done in Jesus' name. Another is asking, Pastor, daughter, hang up and I'll call you back. Hang up and I'll call you back. Amen. Hang up and I'll call you back, daughter. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. This one is saying, good morning to you and your family. Please, I'm asking you to help me pray for my daughter. Amen. She just took um, a work. Amen. Bless God. She had um, a me medical problem. Amen. Twice a few years ago. And um, it seemed like there is a recurrence. She's, um, all right, so we pray. Father, we pray for this daughter that this dear mother is um, requesting prayer for. I pray that whatever is going on in the daughter's body, that you will, it will not be a recurrence, um, reoccurrence of the, of the condition in the past. I pray for healing, deliverance. I pray for breakthrough from it. I pray you lay your hand in, upon her body. Allow the same virtue that flowed through the woman with the issue of blood to flow through her body, relieving, delivering, and setting her free from the attack on her mortal frame. Daughter, in Jesus' powerful name, be healed, and we command your body to respond to the healing touch of the Master's hands. We decree it done in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. And amen. Somebody's asking, amen, good morning. Um, please help me pray for my marital settlement. Amen. Father, we pray for this marriage this morning. I ask that whatever is happening in the marriage, that God, you will fix it. You will turn things around because the scripture declares that marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. Men ought to love their wives as Christ loved the church and women, wives so submit to their husband. Whatever is causing the, the trouble in the relationship, God, fix it, turn it around. Do it for the grace of God, for the glory of God and for the good of mankind. We deliver this couple in your hands and ask that you will straighten things out and give them a testimony. We give you praise and we give you glory and we ask that you fix it by the hand of God for earth has no problem that heaven cannot cure. We decree it done in Jesus' powerful name. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to Almighty God. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. God keep you. May the light of his countenance shine upon you. Before I go, if today is your birthday, I just want to tell you happy birthday. If today is your birthday, happy birthday to all those who are celebrating birthdays today. Happy birthday to all those who are celebrating birthdays today. God bless and keep you. Enjoy your day. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, let us be grateful. Let us be grateful for what God has done, is doing, continue to do in our lives. Have a great day and much love and appreciation to you, ladies and gentlemen. And I to give you this as I go off air, the Reverend F.C. Barnes and Company. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And before you leave the, the portal there on YouTube, can you give me a thumb up, please? Everybody, give a thumb up on YouTube. Everybody, give a thumb up on YouTube before you go. God bless you. Amen. Have a great rest of the day. Much love and appreciation to you and your loved ones, everyone. God bless you. And as they say, keep it locked. Amen. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Reverend F.C. Barnes and company say he didn't have to do it, but he did. Have a great day. Keep praying for us. Shalom.
say that again. I like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He didn't have to wake me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad he did. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. I can say he didn't have to wake me, but he did. Yes. Don't you know he shook me until he woke me. He stopped. I dreamed of a city called glory So bright and so fair When I entered that gate I cried holy The angels all met me there. They carried me from mansion to mansion yesterday. Oh, the sights that I saw. I want to see Jesus, my precious Jesus, the one who died for I thought that day when I entered that city. My loved ones all knew me well. They showed me in that hour All through that land called heaven. The scenes that I saw were too numerous to tell. I saw Abraham. There was Isaac. There was Jacob. Oh, and there was Mark, Luke, and 
contemplative. But I said, I want to see my Jesus. For you see, he's the one who died. Then I bowed on my knees and cried holy, holy, holy. Then I clapped my hands and sang glory. Has saved me 
and gave me life it And now I have everything I have everything I need to make me happy Thank God, yes I do I have Jesus to show me the way He has saved me, gave me life eternal Try to turn him away. 
my Jesus. This precious Jesus, without Him, how lost I would be. Think of Jesus since I found him a friend so kind and true. I would like to tell you how he changed my life completely. Yes, he did. He did something that no other friend could ever do.
This heart of mine was full of misery and so much woe. But the master placed his strong and loving arms around me. And he led me in the ways I owe.
Father and Father, I know what will my say be what can I say when Jesus beckons me? center of attraction is going to be the Son of God. Praise the Lord. For a long, long time ago, he bought us by his death. Just think about the glory in that home beyond the sky. Just think about the beauty we shall see by and by. Many things on earth a bad you will be coming over there. But I long to see.
is but a boy. I yielded to his pleading. Then I entered his employ. My life. I've spent all in service, yes I have, for my Jesus every day. So the man who I have worked hard will take me, take me home. Yes, he will. The man whom I have for all of these days is coming after after me to take me, take me on. It'll be the home of all the free. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna shout forever. Thank you, Master. It's gonna be right there beside that crystal sea. is coming back for me.
just a mention of your name. Flowers grow, the desert blooms again. Like fire in winter cold, like pure precious gold, Jesus, just the mention of your name, Jesus. Just the mention of your name. The flowers grow, all the deserts bloom again. Like fire in winter cold. Like pure precious gold, Jesus, holy Jesus, just the mention of your name. Like a lighthouse to a sailor. In the midst of a midnight storm, like a harbor to a ship that's battered and torn, like bread to a starving, empty heart, like fresh running water. A soul that's parched, Jesus, just the mention of your name, holy name. Sing it, children, now. Jesus, just the mention. Flowers grow, the desert blooms again. Like fire in winter cold, like pure precious gold. Hallelujah, Jesus. Precious Jesus, just a mention of your name. Just sing it one more time. Jesus, just the mention, just the mention of your name. Holy name, holy name. Like pure precious gold, Jesus, just the mention of your name, Jesus, just the mention. Just a mention of your name.
just the touch of the hand, precious Jesus. Dipped into the oil of the Holy Ghost. It will soon all my fears wipe away. It's the anointing that I need most. Sweet. Oh, 
sea of life Oh yes, it's raging Oh yes, the storm clouds Round me Sometimes I'm tossed about So much turmoil It's growing so very, very cold All by myself I'll never make it Oh, but this one One thing I know When I speak that name of my Jesus Oh, every storm collides has to And I say, Savior, these old blinded eyes, they open and they begin to see.
These things I've learned to love Hold you to my heart Are just borrowed They're not mine at all Jesus only lets me use them to brighten my heart. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Hold back the curtain of me. deserve God's only son. I could never be worthy of those scars in his hands. For reasons I will never know, he chose the road to Calvary to die in my stead. Why he loves me, I can't uh, Stand. Roll back the curtain of me read now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Remember, please, Lord. I'm human, sometimes I forget, yes, so remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Praise the Lord. There were so many others that he might have chosen to follow him. learning and greater distinction to follow him. Men with authority and forceful ability who know how to speak Exactly why I'm here at all. 
But today I follow my Lord It was business as usual Till I heard him say Follow me I left all behind That day when Jesus said Follow me I did myself all My old life Completely With no thought That this could be wrong As long as I follow The steps of the master I know I'm where I belong For he chose Many times while on my journey I've stopped along, along the way To help a weary pilgrim's load To share, yes to share Something would bid my heart to stay. But home is where my heart belongs. Oh, my father waits me. I'm 
his hand in mine That's enough for me friends that I love so sometimes may pass me by others may really never know the teardrops in my eyes other friends may never feel I can feel his hand in mine. I know that he is near, and I will never walk. Where no twilight ever 
ever deepens Unending day where life shall never be Well, it's a city where no stone Well, hallelujah to God This is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throngs upon the glassy sea? Yes, it is. Oh, time after time, I went searching for peace in some void. I was trying to blame all my ills on this world I was in. used me till I was done in all the while someone was begging to free me from my sin he was there all the time. Oh, he was 
Através de mim. Touch through me, Holy Spirit. Touch through me. Touch through me, Holy Spirit. Touch through me. Touch through me, 
Holy Spirit touch through me. Love through me, Holy Spirit. Love through me. I will be my brother's keeper. Love through me. Hearts of bleeding inside. Only love can dry those weeping eyes. Love through me, Holy Spirit, love through me.
to dwell in flow through me Just a new frame of mind that'll change my old point of view. You know, I've, I've been through them all. Deep down inside, nothing's changed. Nothing's new. I'm not seeking a guilt or just some emotional lift. But there's one thing I'm longing to do, please, Jesus, just to lift up this cup and let you, Master, fill it up, more of you, yes, yes, more. Empty and 
I say, Master, please let me rest. But you know, He who appoints me, my pathway knows just what is needful. Spirit, Spirit. 
Senhoras e senhores, John Starnes vai cantar agora Os Montes Têm de Se Mover.
Now there is a peace that passes all understanding deep down within. Yes. The Holy Spirit reaches out and strengthens me and he guides me. And I just want to say Let me sing that verse one more time. From worry and fear, I've been set free. tomorrow 
One sat alone beside that highway begging. His eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He clutched his rags and he shivered in the shadow. Then Jesus came, oh, and bade that darkness, darkness flee. Let me sing that verse again, please. One sat alone beside that highway begging. His eyes. 
eyes were blind Oh, the light he could not see Bartimaeus clutched his rags And he shivered in the shadows But then Jesus came Oh, and bade his darkness flee. When Jesus comes, oh, the tempter of his broken. When Jesus comes, From home and friends, evil spirits drove him. Among the tombs, he dwelt in misery. He cut himself as demon powers possessed him. Then Jesus came oh, and set the captives free. One more time, please. From home and friends the evil spirits drove him among the tombs he dwelt in misery He cut himself and demon powers possessed him. Then Jesus came, oh, and he set the captive, set him free. When Jesus Jesus come, oh the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus come, well every tear he wipes away.
He takes the gloom <laughs> and fills the life with glory. For all is changed when Jesus will he come to stay. Let's sing that chorus just one more time. Praise God. When Jesus comes, for oh, the tempest path is broken. When Jesus comes, well, every tear we wipes all away. He takes, well, the gloom and fills the light glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. For all is changed. Oh, when Jesus, Jesus comes, comes to stay.
Lord, you're my light when I walk through those dark valleys. I've come to know that your joy is my only strength. I found out that you are a sure foundation. You're my redeemer, my savior, my friend. Let me sing that verse again, please. You're my life and all of my valley. For your joy has become my only strength. Yes, you are. You are my foundation. My redeemer, my savior, my friend. Lord, I need you more than I need the sunshine. Lord, I need you more than I need all the rain. Lord, I need you more than I need the morning. Lord, I need you more than I need anything. Send that chorus one more time, please. Lord, I need you more than I need the sunshine. Lord, I need you more than I need. was a life filled with endless desperation without hope walk the shell of a man then a hand with nail prints stretched down Just one touch and a new love <laughs> began. Let me sing that verse again. It was a life filled with aimless desperation. Without hope, walk the shell of a man. Then a hand with a nail print stretched downward. Just one touch 
and a new life began. Jesus, those walls ring with love, <laughs> warmth and laughter, <laughs> hallelujah, since the giver of life inside. Mm-hmm. 